ahead and take a minute to respond to my colleague um, from Utah. There are members objecting to going to regular order on the budget, and he's one of them. The senator from Utah himself is objecting to regular order, which would be to go to conference on the budget. He was one of the critics when he was running for this office. He has numerous statements on his way to becoming a senator and here that the Senate and the House needed to have a budget. Now the House has passed a budget, the Senate has passed a budget, and yet the senator from Utah is the one, along with the senator from Kentucky, and I understand the senator from Arizona, Senator McCain, earlier today, objecting to going to conference to resolve the differences. Now, I know the senator from Utah has read the Constitution like I have. The Constitution and the laws that created the Senate of the United States give great strength to the minority, of which he is in the minority. But nowhere in the Constitution does it say that one senator from one state has the right to write the rules and laws for the whole country. I've read it lots of times. I've never seen that. But, I, but evidently, that's what the senator from Utah wants. He just said, if we would just do what he wants, we could proceed. Well, I have news for him and for the senators that are objecting. It's not about what they individually want. It's collectively what we want together, representing all of the people of our country, Republicans, Democrats, conservatives, and liberals. And for four years, the same group yelled and screamed about not having a budget. Now we have one. Now they're yelling and screaming about they don't want to work out the differences. I honestly don't know how to please colleagues like this, literally. We had to listen to them ranting and raving for years about we don't have a budget. So we worked extra hard, even though we said at the time, and I was one of them, that no, they're right, technically we did not have a budget. But as you know, Madam President, we had something that was actually stronger than a budget. We had spending limits that had the real teeth of law. What, what people might not realize is that budgets are aspirations. Just like when you do a budget at home, you can say, my budget this year is going to be, you know, $25,000 spending budget. It's an aspiration. And as you sometimes spend a little more or less. There's no mechanism for control. It's just an outline. Those are important. But what we had, we thought, as the Democratic leadership is better than a budget. We had actual spending controls. But that wasn't enough for the Republicans. They knew we had spending controls, but they still went on Fox News and everywhere else explaining to people that we had no budget, inferring that there were no controls. It's patently false. Patently false. We had spending controls. We have spending controls now. Spending limits that are agreed to by Republicans and Democrats, except that there are a handful of Republicans that don't agree with those limits. So they've decided because they represent, you know, f half of four states, that they want their way or the highway. Now the whole Congress can't go to a conference on a budget. I don't understand this. I understand protecting minority rights. I understand making sure that everyone's voice is heard. I understand that, you know, we just. Everybody can't get everything they want. But what I don't understand are my colleagues, the senator from Utah, the senator from Kentucky, the senator from Arizona, saying, no, we can't go to a conference to work out the differences on the budget so that the United States could move more quickly to a balanced budget after complaining year after year after year that we didn't have a budget. It is really the height of hypocrisy. And it is completely unexplainable, their position, or unacceptable. So I'm glad I was on the floor. I came just to talk about the tornado, but I'm glad I got a chance to give comment for the record about why not many, but there are a few Republican leaders 
that have stopped the entire budget process until they get their way exactly the way they want it. You know, this is just not the way our government works. We don't have kings anymore. We don't have dictators anymore. We don't have people with special powers. We're all humans and we're all on equal footing and we're all elected to represent our constituents and not anyone in this chamber is entitled to write the budget exactly the way they want it. Now, if I wanted to do something, I could say just as easily as he could say, well, I'm going to object unless you promise me that X, Y, and Z is going to be in the budget. I could say that, so could the senator that sits next to me, Senator Sanders and Senator Carper. Every senator could say that. We all have things that are just very important to us in our constituency. But if we act like that, and we don't act mature and sensible, we'll never get anything done. And that's where we are. We have a handful of Republican senators, maybe less than five, I don't know, who are objecting every day, so we cannot take our budgets to conference to have them reconciled. After yelling at everybody for four years about why we didn't have a budget, the only way we're going to get a budget is to go to conference, regular order, and work out the differences in a public meeting with public votes, not behind closed doors or not in some back room somewhere, but in a public meeting in a conference to talk about what programs or what levels of funding should be reduced, what revenues potentially could be raised, and then, according to our process, then those directions are given to appropriation committees and we can go do our work building a budget, not a budget, building an appropriation for defense, building an appropriation for education, building appropriation for health, for our veterans. If we don't have a budget, we can't even go to regular order on appropriations. And as an appropriator, it's getting really frustrating around here to not be able to go to a regular appropriation meeting and sit down like we used to do before this new crew showed up and talk about meeting our budget caps and how we wanted to allocate the taxpayer money in a public open meeting. Instead of cramming things in and an omnibus bill, doing deals in the middle of the night, if they would just let us get back to regular order and do the people's business, I promise you the people of Utah would be happy. The people of Arizona would be happy. The people of Kentucky would be happy. They just want us to get back to regular order and try to negotiate a budget that the majority, and not even the regular majority, around here we have to have 60 votes to do anything. So before a conference committee can come back, there'd have to be a broad, uh, a broad understanding of what was going to be in that, in, that, in that conference. And let me say the final argument. I could understand a little trepidation on the part of the minority if they weren't in control of the House. But the Republicans have control of the House. The Democrats have control of the Senate. So, I mean, I could understand if one party had both the Senate and the House, that what might come out of conference and it could get rammed down and the minority could be caught off balance. But the minority controls the House. And so this is as fair a fight as you're going to have with one body, you know, one party controlling one and one party controlling the other. And yes, the president is a Democrat, but he's indicated, I think, his very uh, open-minded support for entitlement reform when it's appropriate and additional revenues that are being raised. The president has not put any particular line in the sand that I'm aware of. He's been quite reasonable about this, but he cannot sign a budget unless we can get it to his desk. But we have three or four senators that, if they can't get it exactly the way they want it, they're going to hold up everything. I don't think that's what the American people want, and I'm disappointed in my colleagues, and I yield the floor.